I still feel like I'm in a state of shock. Like I literally can't believe I'm making this stupid video. <laughs> I know that I need to make this video because it is impossible to continue living when your world has quite literally stopped spinning. I <gasps> never imagined ever that I would have to make a video like this. I would ever understand the things that I've had to learn about in the past week. My best friend has been the same person since I was 11 years old. You know when God gives you soulmates and it's not necessarily your partner, but it's somebody who you know your soul has been connected to for your entire life and even beyond this life prior to being born. That's the relationship that I have with my best friend since I was 11. Her name is Danielle. Neither Danielle or I have a sister. And when we met in fifth grade, we became just inseparable. She truly has been my other half for an upward of 20 years. We became each other's sisters. Like we truly have a sisterhood that is so special. She has been through everything with me in my life, everything. She was the first person that my mom called when I got in my car accident with Beckham. She was the only person outside of my immediate family who was at the hospital when I woke up from anesthesia. She's literally like my everything, you guys. She's my everything. And when I say that my world stopped this past Monday, it literally stopped she called me and said hey i i need to tell you something immediately i knew that it was serious and she let me know that she went and got her labs done because she had been feeling really under the weather for quite a few weeks at that point. Her strength had gone down. She felt weak even walking up the stairs. She was having some excessive bleeding with her gums. She'd also suffered from COVID and the flu within the same month. It just seemed like she really wasn't having much of an immune system. So she actually ended up getting her labs done because of a couple other very specific feelings and promptings. When that lab work came back, her white blood cell count was over 100,000. A normal white blood cell count in a healthy individual is between four and 10,000. And that was a direct indicator that she had leukemia. She immediately admitted her to the hospital, a specific hospital that is phenomenal and specifies in cancer patients here in Salt Lake City. They did additional tests on her blood work and they did confirm that she has AML leukemia, which is in the 1% of rare cancers. It is also one of the most aggressive cancers that exists. And it's typically found in people who are over 60. <laughs> to say that this has been one of the hardest weeks of my life would be an understatement. And the only thing that even comes close is the week that Beckham was born. My heart is obviously shattered thinking about the possibility of a life without her. Danielle and I are the type of friends that we have had countless conversations about the nursing home our husbands are gonna throw us into when we're 80 years old and crazy and we just speak so futuristically and talk about dying next to each other in old age because that's how close we are. When I say that she's my everything, I think that her best friend just doesn't suffice because she's not my best friend. She's like my blood. She truly is one of my soulmates in this life and anybody who knows me knows that it's Rachel and Danielle. Obviously the scare that comes with this diagnosis has been so severe and to completely put my feelings and emotions aside, the majority of my anguish comes from the fear that she's experiencing <laughs> and what her future holds, the things that she's going to go through in the upcoming weeks. To say that she's petrified would be an understatement. She is one of the strongest, bravest people. She literally just texted me, so this video means nothing to me right now. I'm so sorry, you guys. Um, it's emergent, so I'll come back to this video when I can. Oh my word, you guys, I'm so, so sorry. That is like 
such an accurate representation of just exactly how everything is going right now. It's like any text, any call, any moment that I can just see her, talk to her, be with her, I would literally drop anything. I've been so fortunate to be able to be with her every single day throughout this process. But as she starts chemo, she is more at risk than even a newborn baby when it comes to infection. So we are only having her mom go into the room for the foreseeable future, which is about the next six days while she does chemo. But just to backtrack so that you guys understand like why I would literally jump at just a text from her. Um, I still feel like I'm in a state of shock. Like I literally can't believe I'm making this stupid video. Um, I have no idea where I left off, but um, the first day that she was admitted to the hospital was obviously petrifying. The second day, they took her to do a bone marrow biopsy. They told us that the bone marrow biopsy would give them the opportunity to see what type of genetic mutation was happening to her white blood cells. Because the cancer lives inside of her bone marrow, so in her bone marrow, her white blood cells were duplicating and growing bigger with the cancer cells, which was suppressing her red blood cells, so she's had to receive multiple blood transfusion. They immediately started her on an oral chemo pill that actually doesn't have, like, physical side effects, but it's basically just to buy time in order to get results from that bone marrow biopsy. When the bone marrow biopsy is giving us the results of these genetic mutations of the white blood cells, there's a few different genetic mutations that they see with AML leukemia. Some are favorable and only a couple are unfavorable. And we were hopeful and optimistic that her mutations would come back favorable, which makes it slightly easier to cure. Of course, it's cancer. So that's all relative, but uh, the genetic mutations came back unfavorable. And every day it seems like this mountain has just gotten bigger for her, which is so heartbreaking for everyone who just would do anything to climb it for her, but we can't. So it's been a week of just hell. Like this has truly been hell. And I just wish I could take the burden from her so badly but I can't, so the best thing that I can do is ask people to pray for specifics. She has asked me to keep people updated and be able to share her story and she's literally dying and she wants to make sure that she's able to change the world throughout this process and help people feel less alone and help others who have struggled with the same diagnosis. Even when we've received the worst news possible, she has somehow found faith and allowed that faith to override her fear. Initially, I just wanted to share the diagnosis and plead with you to pray for her. Pray for her sweet husband. Pray for her family, pray for her body, pray for her mind. I'm also gonna be leaving a GoFundMe in the description box down below as well as my Venmo for any donation. I am organizing a massive giveaway to give back to anybody who gives to her. Even if it's as little as $1, you will be entered to receive a jackpot giveaway that's valued at over $2,000 of what you'll be receiving. It's all sorts of incredible things I've been able to reach out to multiple companies who have been kind enough to donate. So I'm still in the process of organizing that. So even if you donate prior to that giveaway going live, you will still be entered if you have donated even $1. So please, please, if you have a set to spare, please give it to her. Please just pray for her, manifest for her, send well wishes for her. And I will continue to keep you guys updated. She literally has to make it through this. She has to.